You are listening to the healthmanagement.org podcast series. Mitte Atape Krags, specialist consultant at the Centre for Telepsychiatry in Denmark, discusses the key benefits of digital mental health tools and services. I'm Mitte Atape Krags, and I represent the Centre for Telepsychiatry in the region of southern Denmark. We are a research and innovation center as uh, working as part of the regional mental health services. We support digital innovation for mental health and well-being, and we do this by developing new digital services, validating their effectiveness and delivering them as running services. So we cover development, implementation, research and service delivery. And, uh, and why do we work with uh, digital tools for mental health? Well, provision of mental health services is facing a number of challenges uh, in Denmark and on a global scale. These include increased prevalence, uh, treatment gaps, and discontinuity of care, for example. And just for reference, these were already important problems along with others before the pandemic, but uh, let's just say that they haven't exactly improved during this time. So basically, digital tools for mental health are about increasing access and improving mental health outcomes for people with mental health problems. And what the digital tools can offer includes the chance to promote mental health and intervene at an early stage. They can also improve access to quality care and support and enable self-management. They can allow for greater continuity and service provision uh, through data sharing uh, between the patient and the provider and between healthcare sectors. So just a few examples. And to recap a bit the article that we contributed to the Human Matters issue, I want to touch upon a few main points. The key benefits of digital mental health services as we see them are accessibility, flexibility, and adaptability. Uh, For the services to improve care, we have to find the right balance and be agile. This is why we're working towards a stepped care or matched care model, uh, allowing us to match the level and nature of care to the needs of the individual patients. As a starting point, we're aiming for four steps with the bottom step consisting of information and tests and the top step consisting of blended care. In between would be unguided and guided self-help tools Um, And that these different steps, we would offer different services, some of which would be standalone services only active at one step, and others would span several steps in in different versions. One of these is the ICBT clinic, Internet-Based Cognitive Behavioral Therapy Clinic, which is run from our center by a team of psychologists. Uh, The clinic treats depression and a range of anxiety disorders through online cognitive behavioral therapy, supported in writing by a psychologist. This clinic, which serves the whole country, will form the basis for important development work in our efforts to offer stepped care. And to make this happen, we're looking into developing unguided treatment and treatment for a broad range of illnesses and this blended or hybrid treatment format, including in-person encounters as the very top step. Other services include the MindHelper website, which offers information and support to young people struggling with mental health problems. This is completely asynchronous and available at all times. It's also a very low threshold service. So it's something that would be placed at the very bottom step. Another one is video consultations, which of course is in the synchronous category and has been heavily impacted uh, by the pandemic. So all in all, digital services have been a vital part of how we have managed the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, When the pandemic hit us, we saw an immediate rise in the use of tele and video consultations. And at the same time, we had to implement a new solution to be able to handle the demand that we saw. This implementation process had already been planned as an on-site process, which now had to be carried out virtually. So that was a whole challenge in itself. And in in this situation, it became clear that support, as in technical support and training and a network of local contact persons was key for our success. So our focus now is to sustain the beneficial aspects of digital services that we've seen over the last many months. We very much see the way forward to be the asynchronous format, independent of time and space. 
as well as this stepped or matched care in combination with, for example, face-to-face -face encounters into the uh, hybrid care format. Introducing digital services can add this extra layer of choice and personalization and hopefully free of critical time for in-person care, for example, for complex cases or bringing down waiting times. And of course, they're not the answer to all of our problems and there are plenty of challenges ahead of us, uh, not least in trying to ensure health equity and minimizing the digital divide. This includes improving digital skills in both caregivers and patients and not just how to work the technology, but how to work it well and confidently and establish the necessary therapeutic alliance between the clinician and the patient. So to, to sum up, mental health affects us all. And this is more clear and getting more attention than ever now because of the pandemic and the way it has impacted our lives. It's not new to us uh, who work in mental health service delivery, but there's no doubt that there's a greater focus on the topic than there was pre-pandemic.